Um, so the first step's wet and wet. And uh, we're gonna wet the entire face up into the hair and so forth in order to uh, get it prepared for the pigment. I don't know if you can see the, the drawing. Can you see the drawing there? Yes. And uh, I pre-mix a lot of the paint because it takes a while to put together you know, the, the right mixture. And I know it'll be sort of a waste of time here. Not waste, but to take up the time that would ordinarily be spent doing other things. And so uh, I, I try to mix everything in advance. That might be a little bit too dark, so I might have to add some more. Now these mixtures of skin tone are basically yellow ochre, cerulean blue, and a little rose matter, uh, genuine. And um, the shadow color is uh, the same uh, uh, same pigment, except that it has um, alizarin in it instead of the rose matter so we can get a little darker. And the key is to keep the paper wet, but when you place the brush onto the paper, um, you don't want to uh, have a lot of water on your brush. Otherwise, because there's water on the paper already, so there's no point in adding more water to it before you um, put your pigment down. So, you know, we'll start with a little wet, cover everything, the face, all the way down. You know, we're going to go around the highlights. Here's the nose, uh, highlight on the nose and on the bridge of the nose. We'll go around the lips and the eyes. And the reason is I don't want the uh, skin tones, etc., to um, get in the way of um, or changing the pigment or changing the color of what's underneath the, um, you know, the skin tone. So, I go right up into the hair because um, it's going to be darker anyway Look around the eyes. You can ask questions if you want any, at any time. Uh, I don't know if I have the answer. I'll check my Funk and Wagnall for or questions I don't, don't have the answer for. Do you do your drawings in real life, always? Uh, these are from photographs. Uh, I don't um, have really, except for a workshop, I don't have uh, really access to from life long enough to do it from, from life unless some have, have a model that's interested in sitting for hours and hours and hours. <laughs> and as I say, I don't draw that fast, so I'm kind of kind of slow, and they, it really is impractical for me to um, try to do a lot of stuff from life, which I do. That one there where I spent so much time on, I think that's from life, but um, I can't be certain because that was some time ago, and uh, I don't quite remember. For all I know, that painting was started on a, at a workshop and when I was finished with the workshop for the day and go back to the motel, I didn't, couldn't see a reason why I would want to bother. Um, uh, what do you call it? Um, watching just television. Uh, so I always bring my, so I always bring an easel for this little contraption. You can thank Marilyn Rose for that idea. It's a, just PVC pipe that put together to weigh it barely weighs three ounces and you can use it for an incline wherever you go. Anyway, I'll spend the time in the motel messing around with a, with a painting and that's another one there uh, uh, was one of those that I did. Turned out it was an, it's an, award, it's an award winner so I don't know what they were thinking. But, uh, but I don't know, who else? Now, I'm pretty familiar with other people's work here. Uh, is there anyone here who's doing portraits? I saw Lynn Palmer, I know, who's doing them. And um, 
uh, is anyone in the audience doing them or wants to try to do them? I suggest people that you should try to get to people who can help you with that. Um, my first teacher in watercolor was Elizabeth Horowitz, and some of you are probably familiar with her because she, uh, no doubt she's taught a lot of people. And uh, I got, really got started with her over there. I think it was the summit. Um, uh, I guess they, they changed the name of it. I don't know what it is anymore. Summit Theater of Arts or something. And she, you know, she always had a topic every day or every week to do. And one of them was a portrait. You had to draw the portrait, you know, right there in class. And that was, uh, that was pretty pretty mean. So I was so disappointed with it that I said, um, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do another one, but I'm going to do it on my speed. And uh, finally got it done. And uh, turned out that turned out pretty good, actually. It got me into the New Jersey Watercolor Society show for the first time. But um, OK, let's all get this thing going here. Um, so if you've had uh, experience with portraits or you want to do portraits, I, I would go on the line and, and take a quick look at the portraits by Charles Reed or, um, uh, what's his name, Michael Holter, I think. Um, there are really many, and I notice I take the brush and get rid of some of the excess water before I start applying any kind of paint. But there are, there are good, good studies as well. Janet Rogers, if uh, some, who was uh, just mentioned Janet Rogers recently, um, took a workshop up, and I think it was in, um, in that, uh, what do you call it, um, Hudson River Place. She's a good one. She's a really excellent portrait artist, too. So that's someone you would want to uh, show up with. A lot of DVDs out there. Um, it's a little too dark, but maybe it won't be so bad once it dries. So a little more water going around the highlight. go-to favorite color. And, um, I don't know why. It's just a fantastic blue and mixes mixes other colors beautifully. The only drawback is is that it's very sedimentary. So if you don't, if you use it, you mix it somewhere. You have to make sure you mix it back in there um, really, really well. Otherwise, it'll separate out quickly, and it's not something that you really want to. Unless that's a your happens to be your objective, um, you know. So. John, do you use a transfer paper? Okay, I have used it, but um, I find um, that uh, it's a little messy. Now, a lot of I have a lot of lines here on this this lady here. And it's just pencil. I think it's HB or something like that. And um, uh, the problem with pencil is sometimes it leaves a mark and you can't get it up. But um, in my case, uh, I use. I didn't do it this time because I wanted you to see the marks. But um, I'll, after I get the drawing transferred, I'll go ahead and um, erase a lot of the lines. Oh well, what am I doing? This from my brain. Uh, I guess I'll have to try. I can't. I can't figure, I can't remember what I did with the photograph. <laughs> okay, so this is the shadow color, and you keep it nice and wet. It doesn't bleed too much as long as you get the paper wet and, and take the excess um, stuff uh, out of the brush, excess water out of the brush, and gives you a little more control over your edges. And even before you start to model it, 
you'll notice that it's actually becoming coming to life and you haven't done anything yet. <laughs> you just put in some shadow shapes, which again shows you how important shadow shapes are in um, defining what it is that you're trying to do. You can recognize someone from this 100 yards down in the street, not even have a pair of sunglasses on. But uh, see, I know that person. I can see them coming. But you can't really see the features. It's the, it's the uh, entirety of the person and the shapes and, the, and the, um, the shadow shapes that you're looking at that give the person away. So if you get your shadow shapes right, the person will really come to life. And uh, that, that should be, that should be your, your goal. In fact, you could almost do just a black and white um, painting of somebody. Um, and just do the shadow shapes and you say, oh, I know who that person is. OK. Now, that's kind of messy. But uh, we're going to let it dry. I won't use the uh, hair dryer. And then the next step, we'll see. You'll see how I, you know, other things that um, uh, we're going to do with this to make it um, uh, more not realistic, but make more sense than just simply this stuff here. Now, okay. So what will I do next? So that's all I'm going to do on that. I'm not going to use a hair dryer to kind of let it bleed and. Uh, I'll let it have its, have its way with it, and let me clean up a few edges. I think I'll do the shirt now because I want that to dry because when I do the hair, it's going to, I'm not ready to have it bleed into the skin tones. Now, I ha I'm really disappointed with the, sh with the sh you'll, you'll see when I do the, uh, the shirt. And I'm disappointed with that, and that's my fault because um, <clears throat> I went too fast and didn't think about it enough. And um, the important thing is to pay attention sometimes to what you're doing. Here's the, this is, this is the uh, source of the, of the coin. Well, can you see that? OK. So you can see the shirt's quite dark. But um, I wonder what I should have done is after I put, made an application of some of the initial wash, I uh, would let it dry and maybe splatter some um, masking fluid on it. And then go, can go over it later on once it's dry, and then I can start getting some texture in it. But um, it's not exactly the way things turned out. So, but we're going to do the shirt quickly so we can get into the hair. The shirt really is, um, what is the shirt? What the heck is the shirt? That's the, that's the background. That's the shirt. Okay. <laughs> uh, the shirt is, um, there's no magic to this one. Uh, I simply um, mixed uh, uh, some uh, ultramarine blue, Burnt sienna, maybe get some ivory black. To be honest with you, I'm not remember. <laughs> but uh, if you were, those of you who may have taken a class from Elizabeth Horowitz, uh, she referred to her dynamic duo, which is sort of your go-to, and I'll use it later on. But it's a go-to combination of um, ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. It gives you a fantastic range of grays warm to cool uh, uh, grays. And we're going to use that in the background. Because when in doubt, I can always go to that for a background. All right, so we'll just do this a little wet. It's a dry enough there. It's probably going to weed a little bit. But, um, now, I don't know. I know this lady's name. It's, uh, to be honest with you, I think it's Sonia. And I did a drawing, charcoal drawing, her many years ago. She's actually a photograph from a DVD workshop that I purchased from somebody called Michael Britton, who's a Canadian 
but um, it's had fantastic uh, shapes, shadows to work with. And just, you know, if you're going to do your own photography for, for portraits, just uh, the most important thing is to make sure you don't take a flash, don't use a flash, because that will wash out all of the um, shadows. And you need shadows to make the thing work. So if you can do it without a flash or maybe in front of a window or something where you can get that Rembrandt look where whole, this whole face is lit, but then there's a little triangle over here that um, helps to define the face. So we just throw this, gonna throw this on. I have no interest in really modeling it so much as to get the paper wet, get it down there. Because I, values are very difficult to judge. She may look awfully dark now, and it looks kind of dark to me, but don't forget everything around it is so white. So, uh, and we'll just come down here and fiddle around with that a little bit. And it's a little darker on this side. What did Ed Koch say when, do you remember what Ed Koch said when he visited <laughs> the pyramids? Do you know who Ed Koch, first thought, do you know who Ben Koch is, former uh, mayor of New York, and uh, really a very interesting mayor, but he had a trip to uh, um, Egypt as, I don't know, I guess he was his mayor, and uh, <laughs> it got him sitting on a camel, <laughs> and uh, his, his caption was, uh, was, how am I doing? Uh, Bring me your toughest camel. And, and only way Ed Koch could say it. Well, so, uh, say, uh, how am I doing? So anyway, <laughs> I love that guy. He, he said it the way it's supposed to say it. OK, so now, uh, there's no texture there. But you know, when in doubt, you just sort of plop around in there, get something somewhere. It may look awful now, but at some point, it may start to come together. That's a bad edge, maybe so we can get rid of that. Okay, how are we doing on time? Okay. What time is it? 20 anyway? up. 20 up? Yeah. Okay. All right, so we're gonna to try to do the hair. Now the hair for me, as I think maybe some of you heard me say before, um, get a <coughs> photograph of the person with a hat on and uh, um, no teeth. <laughs> <laughs> because for, hair is the most difficult thing for me. And if I'm going to mess something up, it's going to be the hair. It's going to take a lot of, usually takes a lot of work to, to, to correct it. So, I'm going to show you the best that I can do today, which is not necessarily the best that I can do overall. But it will be instructive in terms of how I approach it. <clears throat> and I have trouble with real estate. This is a lot, I call this real estate. And there's more of it than I like to use because I'm better off fooling around in there and not in here. But it ha you have to do it. So when you're doing hair, you try to break it up into um, sections and kind of work on the section by itself before trying to, in fact, do the whole thing. So I'm going to try to work just on in, in this area. And it'll be wet and wet with uh, two colors, uh, kind of a cerulean and rose matter or something, maybe alizarin. It's a little bit of a purple shade to it and then also the hair but um, so we'll work this wet and wet but in, in a specific way so that um, we get some kind of control over what we're doing now the highlight as I said is is a um, intended to be uh, not white I think if you look at most people's hair in, in the sun it really isn't white they're 
even the whites of the eyes aren't white. They appear that way, but in practice, it's not really the case. So we'll do, we're going to wet this whole, whole area. We're going to put in our entire highlight uh, light all the way around. We might stop over here. And then we'll come back in with the uh, first, this, remember, sorry, this is the first wash. This is not a wash that would ever be considered done. And when we get to the, the, the final step, that's where you would start thinking about um, starting adding real refinements and darks to um, uh, what you're doing, bringing, you're gonna bringing the whole thing to life. Hmm? You're going to start with the darks. Huh? You're going to start with the darks first. You're going to do the darks first and the, the air? Uh, no, I'm going to put this highlight color in first, wet into wet, and then I'm going to work the dark color into that. <laughs> So that it does hopefully it doesn't look like straw. <laughs> I probably this is this is not the actual color. It's just a little left over on the brush from the highlight, which it's not really quite correct. Anybody asleep yet? Why do you focus on portraits? Oh my God, I don't know. <laughs> you like ladies or uh, uh, what's the story? You know, somebody asked me that the other day, and I said I, I'm not, I, I can't, I don't know why, except to say that my mother was a uh, classical pianist from uh, where is it? Um, Juilliard. She went to the Juilliard School. She was an artist. She painted a lot of things, and so I never became a musician. And I can't really, up until now, I really can't say I really became an artist. But I was around it for so long, and I recall, for some reason, I had a book of. Uh, well, if anybody remembers Walter T. Foster, you could always get those books on how to do a tree, how to do a person, how to do whatever. And for some reason, I had a Walter T. Foster book on portraits. And uh, this was in, uh, I hate to say it, 1958. So my first portraits were pencil portrait copies from Walter T. Foster's book. And um, I don't know, I just, houses and trees never really made a connection. And I think it's because I, I, I enjoy getting a likeness, and if the nostril's off or the eye is off, I notice it. But if the tree is off, I'm not so, I'm not so um, uh, into fixing that. So uh, it's a, it is a good question, but I don't. Why do you like to do landscapes? Maybe for the same reason I like to do, uh, you know, portraits. It's hard to hard to know. I have a few landscapes, if you will, in my <laughs> repertoire, <laughs> but uh, uh, I, I would be, well, it's only one I think I've ever shown. It's a, it's a, it's a window with blue shutters with some pewter things in it. I called it Sentinels, but it's from an old schoolhouse um, up in uh, northern New Jersey where I took photographs of it on a motorcycle ride. I said, wow, that might make a nice paint. I made it, but that's been uh, hanging around in my whole closet for a long time. So anyway, that's, um, I get it wet enough. Nobody answered that question. Why do you do landscapes or still lifes or uh, anybody? <laughs> um, Marion. Marion does a lot of different things, so she doesn't really get herself. Um, 
tied into one specific, specific genre. Yes. Mel Vigman like, seems to like architecture and mountains and stuff like that. Um, so what, you know, why is that important to you? Can you tell me? Well, I it's not, it's not, a, it's not a test. Oh, yes, Who is it? It's Susie. I think the watercolor portraiture is the hardest uh, what, genre mm -hmm. of, in the watercolor world. I really do. I mean, did you see the Obama portraits being unveiled recently? Yeah. 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 <laughs> now, I don't know if they were oil or acrylic, but I mean, they kind of went off of what? Off of the uh, general. Uh, portrait uh, yes. sure, that they usually yeah. put in the National Gallery or the White House. Yeah, I was um, kind of a traditional, I was kind of disappointed. I thought, it, I didn't feel, someone asked me about this earlier, I, I didn't feel it was presidential. I agree, I agree, but I think the Kennedys started that. Mm. Kennedy sort of went off script too. Well, now, Susanna does portraits too. You do, peop you do people and landscapes. If I have to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well. If I have to. Well, not landscapes, but the peoples. Do you do, um, do the commissions, John? And you're yes. So good at portraits. And that's probably why you selected to do what you love. I think we all do that. Right? We like to get success. And that's why we work on what we do. It's not that it's always successful. But you are a success. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Uh, the check is in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> well, for me, it's always the challenge whether I can accomplish it or not. Well, Jill's another story where she does a, has a wide range of, of, of subject matter. Um, and not just houses that she does. She does uh, uh, landscapes. I've seen her do pet portraits and so forth. So uh, I'm kind of boring in the sense that that's a, this is all I do. But um, others have a um, you know a better um, a wider range of subject matter. Now we pull this up into the wet area. So. Doesn't look so straw. Now I think this is all I'm gonna do because that's gonna dry and it allows me to get the background in quickly and at the same time get to the next step, which I think you'll you'll like that a lot better. Well, I like it too because it's this is, this is, can I just get through this and get to the good stuff is what I say to myself. So. Now this of course is not done. At some point I would um, start any darker versions of it. I'd be, pick out some dark uh, strands that um, give it more texture and so forth. But the, this is the, that's kind of the idea of how I do it. It's wet and wet, highlight, and then I don't go over the completely black. I, I take the dark uh, area, take it up to a certain point, and then start working it into the um, highlight area. Uh, okay. So well, let's move on. What's what? I'm what, 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 what time there? I want to make sure we. I know. Stay on that focus here. What time do you want your break, John? Uh, I'm going to stop at after about um, 15, 20 minutes on this next step. Okay. So if somebody want to, wants to kind of keep the clock available on that. Um, like I say, I'm not finishing the portrait. I'm just telling you, showing you what the steps that I go through to get it done. Uh, back. Now, the background is um, wet and wet, of course, but it's also um, the most important part initially, as I said, is to get rid of the white of the paper. But you, can't, you can't judge um, value unless all of the values are in there working, so you know whether, well, that should be that lighter or darker, but um, uh, you can't tell until you get something done on paper. I've been doing these silly little 
they're, they're actually in the sketchbooks there. I didn't open up that page. Sometimes you get a little tight like that. I can't, I don't want to work on that thing anymore. I've been, I've been 40 hours in and I don't want to bother with it anymore. So what can I do that's fun? Well, I uh, open up my sketchbook and I find a goofy expression. Well, my daughter has one, my son is in there. I'm in there as Dr. Irwin Corey and uh, having fun with it with a painting that doesn't, it's not meant for exhibits, it's just meant for my sketchbook, so I don't have to, I try hard, but I don't go out of, out of my way to make it, recent, you know, make it decent, so. But, and it turns out they are pretty decent, <laughs> so. All right, so we get a little, put the background a little bit here. It might bleed into the hair a little, so be it. That's not bad, you get a nice soft edge there. Backgrounds for me are generally, aside from hair, are the most difficult because I tend to jump before thinking. And that means I say, well, that would make a great portrait. And then when I get into it, I, what am I gonna do with the background? I, I get stuck with the background. You should be thinking the background, I guess, uh, while you're also thinking of the portrait. Uh, working on a painting now, I don't know how long it'll take to get it done, since I think um, I'm getting typecast as someone who paints people, women with parasols. My, my mother-in-law painted to my mother-in-law when she's about 20, one or two years old. She's sitting under a parasol. I can't tell you how long it took me to paint that. And here I am painting, painting another one of a young, young girl I saw in a, at an air show. Um, dressed in period, World War II period clothing, sitting under a pink parasol, all of, all of the um, reflected light onto the blue blanket that she's on and under her face and the whole thing. But then they get, they get the drawing done in the parasol, I said, what the hell, I, I can't paint the background. I don't have enough of it. Well, what am I gonna do? So you get into these little tight spots where, uh, you know, now what am I gonna do? I got this thing on, about hours on the drawing. What do I know? You're stuck for the weeks of thinking about a stupid background. So if you take me where I'm worried for, think about it first, not last. <laughs> now this is the, but, Elizabeth would call your dynamic duo version. Um, it's um, uh, burnt sienna and Elizabeth, or huh, burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. And you can mix this in any, you know, in any uh, concentration. If you want a cool or warm gray, uh, you just add less blue or more blue. And, uh, and you get that nice background. Now this, as I say, later on will probably further along in the steps if I were to ever finish this portrait. I would have, um, uh, what do you call it, more um, washes on the background, darken it, maybe try to find a way to add some more texture and some interest to it. But you can see right away, her, her face looked awful. Wow, that's awfully dark. But when you start putting in this other stuff, eh, maybe not so bad. Uh, well, that's what I figured, right? <laughs> 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 right. <laughs> now I go over the hair that for, right there, because it's going to be very dark anyway. I hope you're taking good notes of the test, a written test at the end of this. When I stamp my feet, you'll know it's a, it's, it's a, it's a question on the test.
that's a, that'll be that that's a uh, clue that there's a question. <laughs> okay, so now it's still wet, but it's kind of flat. But um, uh, Do that to add some interest to it. A little directional work, and of course, it's not going to show up that great at this point, but enough to show that there's some interest in there. And uh, when you come back to do the background later in more detail, you just uh, repeat the steps. That's all. Okay, Sonia, mm -hmm. let's go on. Why don't we take a, you want to take a break now? I can prepare, get the other uh, uh, next step prepared. Let me show you what that next step looks like. This is what the next step, it assumes that I finish, this, finish the step I'm currently on, and then I'm going to work with the eyes, nose, and mouth. Okay, let's take the break now, and I can get set up properly. Probably start the February, around February 2nd, so get a painting and get ready for another great show. Uh, everyone, thank June for uh, putting on, uh, setting up and uh, filling in. You're doing a great job. Thank you. And again, uh, Bob, we can always help, even if it's just a little bit, it always helps. Even if you can spend, like, you drop off your painting, you can hang out for a half an hour and just kind of help out. Is always helpful. I mean, even when we're, you know, uh, receiving, people bring stuff in. It always helps if you can hang out for a little bit and just help check stuff in. Every little bit can help. Uh, remember, we're all volunteers here, and like I said, we're a great group to work with. You know, everyone kind of gets along and kind of enjoys it. Uh, okay. All right, we're back to um, John again. You're up again, John. Let me go get the lights. But before you get here. Oh, I mentioned the fact that I break the monotony of um, doing uh, something like that. It's something that nobody, well, it's not that you don't see it, because I never put it in the show because I'm on a technical just to put it myself. So I have a lot of fun with it. So I thought I'd show you a couple of them. Uh, this is, that's a self-portrait. If you know who Professor Irwin Corey is, some of us uh, don't. And uh, this one is from a model, uh, her name is Caitlin San Angelo. Some of you may be familiar with She had that screwy little thing with her clip. And uh, uh, that's nothing much there. That's fun. And this is a friend of mine that lives in Phoenix, uh, David Buckminder. Oh, but I printed the, the photograph out because when I first saw it, I thought, wow, I think that would make that. But I didn't want to make a big show of it, so I did that one. And then uh, uh, that's my son. to paint one eye. <laughs> 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 
we're a little short of time, so I'm going to paint one, one eye. And um, it's essentially uh, um, both wet and wet and wet on dry, but more wet on um, wet than wet on dry. And get the right brush here. And it's going to be like three or four colors. First, we need something for the white of the eye, so we're going to use a little cerulean blue to gray it down with a little, um, what do you call that? A rose matter. And it's just a dead, I mean, you can't even see the palette, I suppose. Maybe, maybe you can see the palette. Anyway, a, a little bit of. Um, uh, yellow ochre to gray it down. And it kind of looks like, it's a, almost purple, can you see that? Yes. Yeah. That might be a little dark, but because it's wet and wet, it won't be so, won't be so bad. <clears throat> and then the iris will be uh, burnt sienna. Initially, just straight burnt sienna. And then we're gonna darken it with a little ivory black in it. I really have two. Um, John, do you wet all your sheets and then stretch them? No, I don't stretch at all. You don't, you just staple them? Yeah, because um, uh, I use a light box. When I finish my drawing and I decide how um, uh, big or small I want the painting to be, um, then I want to finish the drawing, get staples to do it, bring it back, trace the drawing, stick it on the light box, and then transfer it. But you can't do that with a piece of stretched paper because it's already on the board. So um, uh, I just stapled it down, and if it wrinkles, it wrinkles. So I don't. You know, I, 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 I try. I first finished the painting using 300-pound, um, 300 pound, whatever that is, arches. And uh, I probably never use it again. But the problem is that it um, has a very tough texture, and so it's very hard to get the edges that, that um, uh, you want. Okay, and then the last thing is a straight ivory black. Okay, so now the thing that I do. One thing I haven't shown you really is, um, you, you ever seen these little, little, little things? Yeah. Yeah. You go to the photograph, and this is if you want to spend the time duplicating what you see on this photograph. You know, if you, if you look at that, see it's kind of purple, when you go to your painting, hey, not even close. So you know, you know you're kind of working back and forth, so this is your target get rid of all of the tones around it so you can actually see what um, you're uh, trying to do. But uh, only on rare occasions do I pay any attention to trying to match. I did it on one painting. I didn't bring it in for you to see, where I tried to match it. Wow. Oh, you know, I probably had 100 hours in that painting before I finally finished it. But. OK, so. <clears throat> We're going to just do the her right eye. And I did a little bit of a dot there for the um, uh, highlight. <clears throat> well, first we wet the, we wet the, um, the whole thing. And we go around every, into everything except the highlight. We go around the highlight. We, we, we don't do it, I do it. You can do it if you want, <laughs> not me. Okay. Now we come back in with our gray color. But we don't go into the iris with a gray color, so you kind of test it to see if it bleeds out. Uh, put in a little bit more. Always either start farthest away from the line you want 
you want to protect or always start in the middle of a shape so you can control um, how much or determine if it's going to bleed in an area and that um, shouldn't be into which it would be bleed. Winston. Thank you, Winston Churchill. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's the gray part. <clears throat> then we go to straight burnt sienna. Then we again test in the center. Uh, that's bleeding a little bit too much, but we, we just keep adding it. Eventually we work our way around the highlight and um, It's just in Iowa, it hasn't even been really constructed. But even at this moment, she's coming to life. And you look at, wow, I, I, it's working, it's, it's working, you know. But if you um, go too fast, uh, it, it kind of doesn't work so good. All right, so now we'll try a little of the darkest part. And there, you know, as you go around the eye, there's always a little shadow from the lid. John, you're using a very strong red or red orange as the base for your eye. Yes, yeah, it's Is that straight. Brown eyes? Yes, it's straight burnt sienna. So initially. If you had a blue-eyed person. I'd go with uh, some cerulean and I'd gray that down, but but not to a point where the blue was lost. Okay. And I might use cobalt. I don't think I would ever use ultramarine because um, um, because I don't know <laughs> cobalt. I think so maybe a little more transparent than. Uh, <laughs> It's a, I think it's Princeton. I've been using it a long time. Yeah, Princeton round uh, number probably three or four or something like that. Now, this, this is dark in here, shouldn't be dark. Now, one thing about highlight is the light's coming from here, goes through the eyeball, comes out the other side. So this area here should always be a little lighter than everything else around it. Now, the pupil, is straight ivory black, right from the tube. And actually, I have to take my glasses off for this. And then we bring it up into the top of the eye as well. And then down. Uh, you don't want you don't want the you know the circle that goes around the eye to be um, black. So you can always go to your darker version of your burnt sienna mix. And uh, put that in the circle there. Yeah, it's still a little bit too wet. And then you can carry it just a little bit. That's not the right color there on her lid, but it helps to, um, what an eye, huh? <laughs> there's, still, there's still more work to be done on it, but that's the basics, okay? And um, we're only gonna do one eye. now. The, the nostrils, of course, you want to get dark there. And I don't know what I did with that gray anyway. <clears throat> the nostrils are kind of the same thing. You want them warm. 
but not black. And some portion of it is actually a little, um, that's the wrong color, I don't have it. Maybe a cat red somewhere out of it. Oh, I'll live with that for now. I'll we'll just mix it in. The nostrils, I say, are kind of black. <laughs> They're not black. They're warm, dark. Okay. <clears throat> Isn't it fantastic? You start putting the, that's how important darks are. Bang! Things start to happen when you put the dark in. So it's kind of dark at the top, but there'd be more light coming in at the bottom. So I'm going to just add a little bit of rose matter at the bottom. And just sort of let it bleed in a little bit. Just a, just a, just a, a breath. You probably can't even see it there. We'll do the same thing on the other side. I mean, light's coming from this way, so it should be technically a little warmer. And we'll just let it kind of bleed in there. Now, I can't resist not doing this. Put a little rose matter in here and, and a little yellow ochre. I, I'm sorry, it's just, this, is, this is the moment when I say, I've got to do something. So we put the little yellow ochre and a little rose matter in there around the highlight. A little more rose matter as you come down. And then uh, soften an inch. And all of a sudden, you have a nose. That's not exactly the color I want there. I'd rather have more of a yellow ochre. So I'm going to just lift that. Now the highlight's a little harsh, so um, towards the end of the painting you would smooth out some edges, uh, put in a, a more appropriate color for the highlight, and um, shadow shape on the bottom of the nose. Look at that. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, look at that. Huh? Oh. Uh, whew. Now the last, uh, not the last thing I want to do, is put the shadow under the nose. I'm going to use um, some of that skin tone. Is that skin tone? No, I don't know what that is. I'll have to make it fast. I'm going to make it a dynamic duo. Um, and make it a uh, gray. How are we doing on time? We should be. Oh, I got it. I'm going to move on to the next step here quickly. sure this is the correct color, but I want, it, want you to see that once you put the shadow onto the nose, it starts, really starts to make sense. Now ordinarily I do this wet into wet so that I can control. <clears throat> and once again, uh, I'll put a little brilliant <coughs> orange in there as it comes down out of the shadow. So I'm really playing with color here. I don't I'm not following 
thing at all. So anyway, that how you approach your your modeling of your features starts with um, getting some of your darks in, so that you again know where the value should go uh, in terms of um, changes. It may it may just simply turn out that you, you hit it the first time, but probably not. And the last thing I'm going to do is just move this down a little bit into the lip area. And right away, she's coming to life. Now, I'm going to have to move on to the next step, but ordinarily what I was going to do was do the lips, which I'll show you how I did it. And I would then darken this, this shape here as well. There's a risk to glazing. Some of you may have figured this out. It took me a quite a while to figure it out. And that is that the more you glaze, the greater the risk you have of developing blotches, especially if you tend to paint wet and wet. Because I, to do this is, this is only one wash here, but I'm going to darken this. I would wet just the corners as I come down, not this area, right in here. So I have to, uh, control of the edge, and then I would do wet and dry in here, just touching the wetness. But if I should make all of this wet, it starts to lift the pigment underneath, mingles with the pigment you're putting down, and before you know it, you're stuck with a lot of um, blotches, which you can get rid of with patience. But um, So I'm going to go on to the next step, because we're running out of time here. So. That's not it. <laughs> uh. right, here I've done the eyes, put in more modeling, did the nose a little bit, and here's where you, you're sort of on your own. You're not necessarily trying to follow specific steps. You're just kind of looking the thing over, trying to decide, well, what do I need to help make this thing uh, work? getting closer and closer and closer. Well, the first thing is we ought to have, since the eyebrows tend to be dark, we should be getting those in. And uh, I'm just going to use a little burnt sienna and uh, ivory black. Because the hair eventually is not going to be this color. But here's a good case where you need to have the photograph available or your reference available so that you know what the shape is supposed to be. And, uh, and you're just sort of trying to get a local <coughs> color in. And um, it's darker in the shadow. In other words, it's darker this way, but as you come into the light, it should get a little lighter maybe leave a spot missing there so you can soften it. And then when you come down into the crevice of the eye, it gets a little darker again. Let's see if that works. And when the time comes to put the actual texture in for a, um, you know, the actual hairs. You wouldn't want to, you wouldn't put all the hairs in, but um, what the heck puddle did I use? Oh. <laughs> uh, you just throw in some that go in the direction of the, that the hair goes and not necessarily all of them. <clears throat> now looking at the photograph, you can see as you come into the light, this area is lighter than there. So we have to pay attention to that. And here, I, I'm just fooling around. I'm not um, trying to replicate anything. I'm just trying to make something that makes sense. And my work is, my work is also elitist. 
Um, I try to pay attention more to shifts in temperature than value. But that's important, but when I was doing the nose before, I, I, I like being able to show that things are warmer as it comes into the light and cooler when they go away from the light. And so here's a case where um, I kind of want that to make sense. Okay, that's enough of that. Now, <clears throat> this cheek, although it's old and light, is this area here is a little darker than the air, uh, the rest of it. So, um, so we're going to just throw in some general skin tone, a little yellow ochre. And I'm going to use a little orange, not orange lake, brilliant orange. It's a, um, I kind of want, it's so transparent. And it's um, made by uh, whatever. And here I have no risk really in wet and wet, so I'm going to wet it a little bit first. So I have some control. And because some of this is warmer than others, as it comes, the chief phone's going to grab the light. So I'm going to put a little orange lake in there first. And then I'm going to add the yellow ochre from there. And then finish it off down here. Are beautiful. <laughs> uh, let's see. Now, there is an area in the muzzle that tends to be cooler and maybe even a little green. So I'm going to add a little uh, yellow ochre and cerulean blue to that area. That's a little bit of a green tone, not too much. I'll even leave that little blotch there. I don't, I'm not that interested in fixing that. And uh, the nose, here's another case where the, the nose goes into shadow, but as it comes out of shadow and it's on the, off the lit side, I would add, I'm going to add a little brilliant orange in there as I come, come across with some um, uh, yellow ochre. What are we doing on time here? Okay, pretty soon we got to. Of the, of the day. Should be darker. So this is the last step. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna everybody's hungry, including myself. So 
little bit too red, but uh, again, it has, what's around it makes a difference there. And if it's too red, we just do that. Okay, that's it. I hope you figured it out. Because I, I can't go for I can't go for something that fast. I can't just hit it the first time. I gotta really sneak up on it, you know, and be real, real quiet about it. All right. Well, thank you very much for your attention. We guys, fantastic. And I always thought you paid it by numbers. <laughs> okay. Uh,